Hey guys, Ariel over here at Fine If. Now if you thought this was going to be a cooking video from looking at the picture, that would make sense, but it's actually not. This is a little look at what I do for skincare. Um, if you're new here, I am Ariel. I live off grid as in no physical connection to any public utilities in a tiny house in the woods in the mountains of northern Wyoming. And I, um, for several reasons, uh, my own health the efficiency of having things in a small space that are useful for more than one thing and um, also because of my water and plumbing system these are all the things I use it for personal and skincare things so I want to show you what I use this probably does look like I'm about to make a meal because pretty much everything here is edible if uh, if you're lucky enough to be one of those people that's not kind of a, a canary um, like me who tends to have been sensitive to, to various synthetic chemicals since uh, pretty closely after I was born, um, I was diagnosed with eczema or eczema, depending how you pronounce it, and I would scratch my skin till I bled, um, especially my face and elbows and backs of the knees and... Um, my parents had to put mittens on me in my sleep because I would be totally unconsciously scratching myself till I was bleeding in bed. And anyway, not fun. So my skin has always been more sensitive than most people. Hopefully most of you have never had those issues. As I've gotten older, um, I've kind of continued to pursue why that is and what to do about it and so on in my life. And 30-something uh, years later, this is what I do right now. My skin, um, while far from flawless, is the healthiest it's ever been in my life. I don't scratch anymore. I pretty much don't itch unless there's some other external thing. Um, still tend to be allergic to hay dust and such like that. That makes me itchy, but not just a, an internal itching. And so just in case you are interested or in case you are dealing with some of those issues yourself, um, I wanted to show you what I use. Now the other thing I want to mention first is aside from anything you can use on your skin on the outside, if you have skin issues like that that seem to be systemically just there all the time, not like you've touched poison ivy and now you're itching, um, something that's clearly more external like that, but if you have systemic issues, really consider taking a look at what's going on inside, especially in your guts, because a lot of issues when they are things coming out through the skin are related to some digestive problem going on inside. So think about that for sure and take a look into that. There's there's more stuff that I could even go into here um, that could cause that. I'm not a doctor. Do your own research. Um, look up stuff. This is how I learn things. I, I Google things and I read books and I read blogs and so on and so forth. So educate yourself about this kind of thing if um, if you have skin issues at all. So for me, a couple of the biggest things aside from all this that I found is a lot of my skin issues went away when I uh, stopped eating wheat and dairy. And um, if you've follow my cooking videos, you probably know that I don't use much of either of those things. And I'm not super strict at this point. For a while I was, and now sometimes I'll eat something that has one or the other, but that helped a lot. And then I, in my life I've had other times where um, I was doing something like taking a lot of magnesium at my doctor's recommendation, which fixed the issue I was taking it for, which was actually menstrual cramps. But um, then I was getting itching all over again, which I hadn't had in quite a few years. And it was just, you know, that was kind of around the clock and working with my naturopath we were able to figure out that my body was just not absorbing enough of the magnesium. I was getting enough to help the, the first issue, but it was creating a second issue because it didn't know what to do with all the other magnesium it couldn't absorb. So it was basically just trying to push it out through my skin, which was making me very itchy. So that was resolvable by fixing some digestive issues. So now I can take that same amount of magnesium and my body actually uses it and there's no skin itching problem. So there's just, there's a whole host of things that could be going on. But one of the things for sure that could be going on is that your skin is being irritated by various synthetic chemicals going on your skin in a whole bunch of forms. Any lotions, creams, cosmetics, all that kind of stuff that especially women tend to use. And a lot of them are super toxic. Um, 
some of them have been tested, some have not. A lot of the ones used in products here in the States are illegal in many other countries because of known problems. Again, just do your own research on that stuff. This video I want to make more about what I actually do. For someone who's had very dry skin, very itchy skin, um, all kinds of issues for a lot of my life, the fact that I don't anymore is absolutely wonderful. So, when I have uh, get drier skin still, and this is most often true in the summer when I'm working outside a lot and in the sun a good bit, or almost year-round on my legs, I tend to get dry skin. Um, I use olive oil. Now this is my big big bottle from the kitchen. I pour some in just another little bottle. I save little bottles anytime I get something in them so I can reuse them for things like this. So this is my bathroom olive oil bottle. Um, and I will just take, I don't do it every day or anything, but I will, especially like right after showering, I'll just pour, you know, a tablespoon or so in my hands rub it all over my legs. It soaks in pretty quickly and I get no irritation with that. It keeps the skin really well moisturized and soft. I also live in a, a pretty dry climate so um, if an olive oil is one of the thicker um, heavier duty oils I use on my skin so if you if you don't get really dry skin or you live somewhere a lot humid you might find that kind of too heavy and sticky on your skin. Mine absorbs it right up and feels awesome. If that's too heavy, my next uh, use is coconut oil. Again, I've got my kitchen coconut oil and I put some in a, a little tub like this to have be my bathroom coconut oil so I'm not always dipping my fingers in my eating oil. Um, but it's the same stuff. This I use for all kinds of... I use it instead of chapstick on my lips. I use it on my hands if I've been washing dishes a bunch and they just get, you know, dry like happens with that. Very occasionally I'll use it on my face, though my face tends to be a little bit more greasy than dry, so I don't often do that. And again, I'll use that on my arms or legs or whatever uh, to, if, if I'm a little bit dry but not feeling like it's quite so flaky that I actually want olive oil. So I use coconut oil all the time. Uh, and it's just, it's a little lighter, it absorbs in pretty quickly, doesn't stay very greasy feeling for long, and is um, mildly antimicrobial and um, a very light sun protectant. Um, on that note, do I use sunscreen? I don't usually. Just about the only time I do is if I am, if I know I'm going to be in the sun all day long, like I'm going to be hiking 20 miles, I do put some right on my nose and right here because my nose sticks out and I get sunburn. As you can see, I've got a relatively light complexion and I'm up at a pretty high elevation, fairly close to the sun rays. So then I will sometimes, because if I don't, I will um, get, uh, you know, burnt, um, uncomfortably peely, blistery burnt. I could wear a hat and sometimes I do. I just, I've never liked hats. I don't, they're not comfortable with me. I wear them sometimes, but if I can avoid them, especially if it's hot, I don't prefer to. The other thing I do while backpacking is I use a sunbrella a lot, which is a little umbrella, which would work for rain except for sun. And that, sometimes I, I carry it and sometimes I stick it in my pack. I've got a setup for that. So if I'm just walking for a long time, I can use that as an actual sunshade. And I do try to avoid using sunscreens whenever possible because of the chemicals in them. And interestingly enough, um, there's lots of research, again, I'm not a doctor, go look this stuff up yourself, about how um, sunscreens block a lot of your body's ability to produce vitamin D for itself, which is necessary for, among other things, preventing cancers like skin cancer. And so for me, I just, I don't choose to use it hardly ever. Um, next to my row here, I guess I've got apple cider vinegar. If you get acne, which I hardly ever get anymore, uh, probably partly because I'm not 15 anymore, and partly from fixing some of the other internal issues with my digestion and such, um, I will get more acne if I eat a lot of dairy or sometimes a lot of sugar. Um, I, I do still get breakouts and so on, but this is apple cider vinegar, the raw stuff with the mother floaties there in the bottom. Same thing I use for eating and cooking and all of that. And it's got the same kind of acid in it that many 
um, acne washes have. So if I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a breakout or my skin on my face is getting really oily, I will just use a little bit of that. So I'll pour it a little bit in my, just in the palm of my hand and kind of take my fingers and you probably want to close your eyes when you're doing this because the, the vinegar evaporating is going to make your eyes sting. So close your eyes and just, you know, rub it all around. I just leave it on there for, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds and get my washcloth and wash it off again. Um, but that, that does do a, a really good job of clearing that up. Now, if you've got an open, um, an open wound of any kind of scratch or something, or like a pimple that you popped and it's now a little bit raw, this will sting for sure. I don't know that it's actually going to hurt it, but it will sting if you've got something open like that. And like I said, you probably want to close your eyes, maybe even hold your breath for a second if you've never done this before, because if you start putting vinegar on your face and take a deep breath and get it in your eyes, you're going to it's not going to hurt you, but it's your eyes are going to water and your nose is going to sting a bit. So occasionally I use that. I don't do this on any regular basis. I use it when I feel like I need it. So sometimes I'll do it a couple days in a row and then I won't even do anything like that for several months. It just varies. Um, this is actually heavier than my olive oil. I said that was the heaviest one. I was incorrect. Um, castor oil. I don't use this all over my skin. If you are really, really dry skin, that might not be a bad idea, um, just because it is a little bit thicker and heavier. What I mostly use it for is actually around my eyes. Um, I don't really wear makeup, and by not really, I mean that in my entire life, I think I've bought maybe five different um, mascaras and that's it. I've never used anything else at all, but I'm a little bit vain and a little bit sensitive about the fact that since my hair is so light, my eyelashes almost don't show up and it looks like I don't have any. I think that looks kind of funny. So not all the time, but I do use a little bit of mascara, um, usually just a dark brown one so that you can just see I have eyelashes. Anyway, this works great as a uh, remover. If you just take a tiny, tiny little drop. This bottle's pretty good at getting a little drop at a time because you don't need more than like that. I mean, that's like the size of a pinhead and rub it around. If you've got mascara on your eyes, just close your eyes. You can wash it off with that. Um, you know, wipe it with a, a little bit of a, a cloth. It melts it right off even if you don't have a water soluble one, uh, which mine actually is. But the other thing it's really good for is actually hair growth. Um, it will I've seen multiple people say this. I've done it myself and it really does work. My eyelashes are much longer and thicker, which for mine, again, isn't saying a whole lot, so I'm probably not a good example because mine are so light and fine. Um, it does make your eyelashes grow longer and thicker. So on that note, maybe if you're going to use it anywhere else in your body, you might not want to put it in places where you don't want to encourage extra hair growth because it does seem to do that. But I do use it around my eyes. It's just nice and relaxing. And even if I'm if I don't have any mascara on, I will sometimes just use a drop of it and just kind of rub into the skin all around my eyes before I go to bed if my face is, is dry or sun or wind chapped at all. So I use that one. And also occasionally, I mean, this crosses over into other things, but occasionally more medicinally, if you've got a splinter or um, a bug bite or something, that there's something in there you kind of want to draw out, I'll soak a uh, a little bit of a, a cotton with it and put a band-aid on to hold it on whatever that is and it kind of helps draw that out and keeps the area nice and moist so that it's not um, as, as you know if you've got a cut so it's not scabbing and, and cracking and splitting it helps it heal a little easier so I use it for that as well but I consider that more of my medical use than just my everyday use and then the other one that I do use a good bit is aloe I use different kinds. I often have one that's just pure liquid aloe like you would drink. Um, that you do have to keep refrigerated because it doesn't have any preservatives. It will eventually start to grow mold if it's out on the counter. But um, And it's a little more runny. So if you're going to use that something just on your skin a lot, it's kind of nice to have one that this has got a little bit of a, a thickener in it and then some, a little bit of extra vitamin E. And there's lots of good brands. But... This is good if you do get sunburned at all. That's probably one of the more familiar uses. You don't need one that's dyed green. I know some of the brands are dyed green to look like an aloe plant. Aloe juice is not naturally green. I would avoid the dyes if you can. So it's just clear like that. Um, most of the time, this is actually what I use on my face. Um, just right after a shower or at the end of the day, again, if my face is feeling a little dry, I'll just rub a little aloe in. I'll also do it on my shoulders, like if I've been out working in the sun in a tank top or something like that. 
it doesn't leave any greasy feel, it soaks in right away, super good for your overall skin health, in addition to being good for burns, sunburns, all that kind of thing. So if I want something not greasy at all, I use a little bit of this. Uh, around my eyes, I tend to use this. If I need any kind of a face wash, I use this. And for general skin moisturizing, I use one of these too. And that's everything I ever put on my skin. What I forgot to say when I was actually recording this is that by nothing else on my skin, I mean absolutely nothing else at all. I do not use any kind of soap, uh, liquid soap, bar soap, any kind of body wash, any of that stuff on my skin. They all seem to dry out and irritate my skin no matter what. So it's been um, at least 15 years since I've used anything on my skin at all other than water. When I shower, I simply wash off with water, you know, and a, a washcloth, and then um, go on with life. I have much, much healthier skin doing it that way. I, it doesn't get irritated, and it just, it really seems unnecessary. I use a, a tiny bit of shampoo in my hair, but nothing else on my skin. The only time soap of some kind would be on my skin is if I'm washing my hands or washing dishes, something like that. But on the rest of my body, I do not use any soap at all. And if you wanted to, you could eat all of those, uh, drink them, whatever. Your skin does absorb things. This is why there's, um, you know, skin-based uh, transdermal um, ways of taking various medications, like uh, I know some various hormone things, there's various skin patches for absorbing other things. Your skin is your biggest organ covering your whole body, and things do, though it protects you from a lot of things, you know, you don't fill up with water when it's raining because your skin gets wet, but there are things that do go back and forth through your skin, that's part of what it does. And so if you're putting things on your skin that you wouldn't ingest, in some ways it's actually worse because if you eat something, you've got all kinds of uh, protective um, systems set up in there. It goes into your stomach. Stomach acid will kill some things. Your intestines will filter some things out. If it's really not usable, you'll poop or pee it out at the other end. And um, your body's able to protect you from some of that. When it's absorbed through your skin, it tends to go straight into the rest of your body without any of that digestive system filtration. And so putting um, poisonous things on the outside of your skin can actually in some ways be worse than eating them. So in general, my rule of thumb is if I, if I can't eat it or wouldn't eat it, then I'm not going to put it on my skin either. So like I said, that fits well also with um, many things for me. It keeps my skin feeling good and healthy. It uh, saves a ton of money because even though I mean buying olive oil and coconut oil and stuff's not cheap, I, I buy these things anyway for all my cooking and such. And so it's um, it's very efficient, it's space efficient because I've got multi-purpose things in my house since I've got limited space that work for more than one thing. I tend to always have them around anyway. And anyway, so that's not the only things you can use. There's um, if you like uh, are interested in more cosmetics and makeup and stuff than I am, because I don't really do that, check out, I've got no affiliation with her, but I've read some of her blogs, um, crunchybetty.com. Um, I think her tagline is, you've got food on your face. She makes all kinds of homemade skincare, personal products, uh, beauty products, and so on from natural and homemade stuff. Uh, I found some of her things interesting. I just don't really do that. But if you are interested in this topic, you might like checking her stuff out and and there's lots of, I mean, you can make all kinds of homemade lotions and stuff, and they're probably great. I just find it's just as simple for me to use these straight oils and such and not mix up anything, you know, at all. So that's what works for me. Uh, people's bodies are different. People have different issues. People live in different climates. Obviously, if you look at human beings, there's quite a range of kinds of skin and so on. So I'm not trying to say this is the perfect way for everyone to do everything, but maybe that'll give you some ideas on how to um, get rid of some of the toxins and expense. I mean, the amount that most women spend on makeup is insane to me, but I spend money on other things like photography that I care about. Um, and just, just give you some ideas and thoughts and suggestions. And so that's what I use. Oh, and I forgot one other thing I really wanted to talk about. Deodorant. That's something most people put on their skin like every day. I don't use it. Now there's a couple things here before you're like, ooh, gross, what a nasty hippie. Um, I do think it is somewhat rude socially if you're going to be around other human beings to just reek. 
That said, I've never had a problem with somebody if you get very close to them, like I'm talking if you're giving them a hug or a kiss, that kind of close, um, smelling like a person instead of like a bottle of chemicals. Um, if you've been around people, you probably notice each person kind of has their unique scent, just like there's a difference between Grizzly smells like a dog, she doesn't smell like a person, but she doesn't reek unless she's just rolled in something nasty or gotten sprayed by a skunk or something like that. Um, so I, I'm totally fine with a, a personal odor that doesn't have to be camouflaged by um, a cologne or a perfume or something like that, but the kind of people that you walk by and you're just like, oh my goodness, that's overwhelming, I gotta hold my nose, that's awful. I think that is inconsiderate and I'm not trying to encourage that. But back to the internal thing, if almost everyone I know, if you change your diet to include mostly whole foods and very little processed stuff, and especially um, excess alcohol, that can be a big one. Some of those are things that again, like I had an issue with magnesium, your body doesn't know what to do with them really. It's not being able to handle them and process them in other ways, so it's pushing them out through your skin and you are gonna stink. Now, um, most commercial deodorants, you probably are aware, again, look this stuff up for yourself. You know, have aluminum and other toxic things. They've been linked to breast cancer and so on. I just, I try not to use them. Most of the time, what do I do? Absolutely nothing, actually. I will still sweat um, when I get hot, but it's just basically water. It's your body cooling itself. And there's probably something, but it doesn't stink. And I can tell when I eat garbage, I start to stink. I can smell it on myself. Um, you know, most of the time though, I can go, I can work out for an hour doing something like a CrossFit class. I get very sweaty, very hot, and I don't smell bad. The other thing with that is a lot of it can be your clothes. If you're wearing a lot of synthetic clothes, especially in your armpit area, um, the, uh, the bacteria that likes to grow on those kinds of fabrics will smell bad a lot quicker than on a cotton or a wool or a natural fiber like that. <clears throat> but so most of the time I just do nothing. If I'm getting a little bit stinky, sometimes I will take just, and again, this, you could mix up your own. I know people do that. I just find it easier to do um, this stuff by itself. Take a little bit of coconut oil, rub it under my arms. I don't pre-mix this actually. And then a little bit of baking soda. I'll just, you know, dab a tiny bit of baking soda and kind of rub it into the coconut oil. That will get rid of almost any odor that you do have going on. But if you've got a really bad odor there, you probably want to look at um, something you're ingesting that is your body's not handling well. And that can be a whole host of different things for different people. But the one exception I have is there's no, um, there's no natural things, including that, that will actually stop all odors if your body is making them. As far as I know, I've tried different, um, more natural deodorants and I've never really been happy with any of them. So if I am in a, gonna, if I know I'm going to be in a situation where for me, usually it's something where I'm going to be very stressed because as you probably know, and as your dog can probably smell and whatever, when you're stressed, your body makes a different scent and that's perfectly normal. But if I know I'm going to have to be in a very stressful situation on a particular occasion, I do, do still have one old tube of a regular just commercial deodorant and occasionally I will put that on just before that, you know, going off to that situation because I know because of the stress that I'm likely to, um, to develop a body odor I don't normally have. But other than that, and that's something that happens, I mean, we're talking less than once a month or so, certainly not, you know, putting this on every day, probably six or seven times a year at the most. Um, but that's the one I forgot to mention because that's certainly skin related as well. Um, that's what I do for deodorant. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See you all next time.